Hey everybody, News Now Wyoming, this should be a pretty quick video. I keep getting asked, how do I get the court documents that I look at? How, how do you use the website and stuff like that? So I figured I would do a quick tutorial of how you may have access to our federal court records. Please note that this website is only for federal court. It is not for your local state, my state, or anything like that. This website here is only for federal courts. So first thing you would want to do is you need to create an account. You do not need to be an attorney to create an account. Anybody can create an account. They will require you to submit a current credit card so that way they can auto bill you for your, the services that you use. The service themselves use uh, they charge 10 cents per page for most documents. If there are pictures or videos that you download as part as part of an exhibit, those will charge extra. I do believe it for a video or an audio file, it's something like 250. Your first $30 of the quarter, so January to March, uh, to the end of March. Your first $30 is free, so if you stay under $30, you don't get charged anything. So once you have that account, which you can use this Need an Account button, then you log in and then you decide where you want to go. You've got all the appellate courts, you know, all the different circuit courts for the Court of Appeals. And then you've got where I do most of my research in the individual district courts. Please note, places like Alabama have three different district courts, so you need to know where, what jurisdiction the court you are, or the case you want to look up is done. And so let's just, for instance, go into the Wyoming District Court. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pause the screen here and log in, so be right back. Okay, so now that you are logged into the district that you want to research in, click on the filing system and it looks different depending on which district court you sign in, but most of them will say something about filing system or read or search filing system. If it, do not click on the one that says file. You do not want to file documents, you want to read them. Okay, first thing I always do is I'll come here and if I don't know the case number already, I don't know anything except maybe the name. Uh, let's say for instance, I want to look up here in Wyoming. Uh, I want to look at the current status of the Bryant case, right? Uh, this is the video that I did that, uh, and I do have the case number, but I'm going to pretend like I don't so that way you see how I do things. But this is the case where they came and did a welfare check on an individual and then ended up making the situation a lot worse, let's just put it that way. Uh, which maybe this will show us that there's an update to the case, so we, I can do a video on that later. So I, after typing in his last name, I run query. Again, his name, first name is Devin. So, oh, look at that, Plaintiff Devon. So you do need to know a bunch of different information depending on what you're looking for. All right, so that does pull up this. Well, this doesn't really help, does it? Docket report, view a document. So how I do it after I find the case that I want, I click on reports up here and go to docket sheet. And then, I do know that it's 2115, so I'm just going to select it. And run report. If you already know the case number, what you can do is come up here to docket sheet, type in the docket case, and then show cases. That's another way that you can do it to run the report. Now here you've got the entire docket. 
If you want to verify, Devin Bryant versus Ryan Lee, individual, individual, the Sheriff's Department, and uh, Deputy, Deputy, and then the County Commissioners. Okay, I'm on the right case. You can find the complaint here again. And then all the way down here, we can see that there was an amended complaint. That's actually what I did the video on. And then I did go ahead and read these summons. And I did not read the summons returned as executed because I can read this here. Answer is due on 319. They were served on this date. Answer is due on this date, etc. All throughout the whole thing. So we can see exactly where everything's status is. As well, uh, docket number six here, you can see an, a order that to, uh, this is where I realized that oh they filed the wrong summons and so he put out the the judge uh, yeah he put out the judge that according to this local rule 4.1 it shall be prepared by counsel using the form obtained at the clerk's office or through the clerk court's website they did not use the proper form for the summons so this is where you could read stuff like minute orders or minute orders depending on uh, what you like about that and so uh, you can technically read some of the orders here and then some of them are actual documents that you have to open so again this, if I open one of these again it's going to charge me 10 cents a page so I'm not going to download any of these once again but how you would do it is you would click on that docket number and then it's going to say oh this is 14 billable pages going to cost you $1.40. So you would click on view document, it would download the PDF. Now this is very important you guys. Up until I uh, did some troubleshooting on why I couldn't open some documents, they do not support Chrome. You must use Firefox. All right. Let me repeat that. You cannot use Chrome, which is the most widely used browser in the world. You must use Firefox, which is a very substandard browser in comparison to Chrome, but this website does not work correctly. And so you may run into the same issues I was having where it says, oh, you've already viewed this, but I've just paid for it to be viewed. So um, use Firefox, just use Firefox. Edge, they say, also works, but let's face it, Edge sucks. Edge sucks a lot, so don't use Edge. If you must use something, use Firefox. A few other things we can do up here. Uh, again, I, I only typically look at the query and the reports with the docket sheet. There are, uh, you can view your billing information. You can view it for the whole quarter. Which again, I'm not going to do that uh, to show you guys. Uh, currently, I'll tell you my billing amount for this quarter is sitting at $47. So. I have viewed a lot more documents than I typically do, but I've had a lot more time up until this last couple weeks to read a lot more cases than I currently, than I have in the past. So that's what everything depends on is when I have extra time to sit around and read cases. But that is how you utilize Pacer. How I always find it whenever I want to go is I just do a search for pacer.login.uscourts. I, I, I always just do a search. Let's go to Google and just do a search for Pacer. So uh, this site will get you there. PacerUSCourts.gov is actually the correct name. Because I've been there so many times, it is going to remember where I'm at. Now, if you open a new tablet here, you can see, oh, yeah, I'm logged in. And now I can actually go to Texas Northern District. Texas has four districts, Eastern, Northern, Southern, and Western. So again, you have to know where that case is at in order to find it. If there is no cross-referencing. If you're in the wrong district court, you will not find the case that you were looking for. So you need to know where San Angelo is in relation to the district courts. Google is your friend. Okay, you can say what district court is San Angelo in and it'll 
Google will tell you. Use Google if there's more than one district court such as here. So once again, we're in. Okay, so here it says file or view and print. Do not click the file button. Click the view print. And so once again, and this might actually remember my last, no, it doesn't. Okay, uh, so this time we're going to use a We're actually going to know what the docket number is. Find this case. This is going to be uh, Miller's case. So H. Miller versus Weber. And run report. So down here at the bot, we can once again verify it's Jack Miller versus Stupid Cops. And then you can see just how far I've gone and order so this is once again you can read the order but it tells you pretty simply what it is it's a mo it, it grants the court granting the motion for extension of time to file answer for all defendants so uh, they the defendants requested more time and then they were given more time we haven't received a reply yet so nothing uh, from Jack Miller yet in response. I believe they've got 30 or 45 days. I do not know. Uh, for sure, each jurisdiction is going to have different local rules. And I do not, I haven't read the Northern District of Texas's uh, rules in a long time. Alright, so there you guys go. If you have any questions, let me know down there in the comments. Good luck. Do not go over that $30 mark unless you want to, uh, for a quarter, unless you actually want to uh, pay some money to them. Like I said, this is the first time in a while I've actually had to pay for it, so it will be interesting. All right, have a great night. Thank you.